Hey, I'm Sapphire. Wanna hear something scary? Code Siren. The following is inspired by a true story from Alex, whose father, Vassal, served in the Bulgarian People's Army in 1982. Vassal was 18 when he was sent for two years of military service, starting in 1982. He was dispatched to a border post along the defensive line between Bulgaria and Turkey. His job was border guard, and his main duty was to patrol the electrified border fence. Mostly, it was to make sure nobody left the country during a time of severe restriction of movement under the communist government. His orders were to shoot on sight. No exceptions. One night, he and his best friend Ivan were patrolling the border as usual with their dog. Ivan was a far senior soldier, much larger and stronger than Vassal, with a kind of look only veteran soldiers had. He described the night as still and cold, and the moon shone through the clear sky during the night. There was a light breeze that whistled faintly across the open plains between the two borders. All was well and normal, and their routine patrol was near their end. Much like most days, nothing seemed out of the ordinary, and the two men started to make their way back to the camp. They were almost back to base when, all of a sudden, Ivan stopped. He turned his head to the darkness. Do you hear that? Vasil stopped to listen and his eyes widened as he heard what sounded like singing. The two men listened and listened as the singing continued and seemingly became louder. Vasil stood still, yearning to know who was singing so beautifully. Then, their dog started to growl softly at first, until it started barking furiously as the singing came closer and closer. Ivan grabbed Vasil. Listen to me very carefully, he said. I need you to run back to checkpoint B, get on the radio, and call for reinforcements. Tell them code siren. They'll know what you mean. What? Why? Do as I say, do you understand? All this over some singing? This isn't the Turks or the Americans. This is much more serious than that. Now go! By this time, the singing had become so loud it was almost unnerving, as if the source was as close as a few meters away. Basil looked around in panic, gripping his rifle in fear and confusion. Basil started to run. He knew that the checkpoint was less than a kilometer away and that he could make it there in a few minutes if he really ran for it. Behind him, he heard the barking and the growling of their dog change into whimpers and cries, which was followed by bursts of automatic fire that ripped through the night air. The fire sustained until he had finally reached the radio at the checkpoint. Checkpoint B to base, checkpoint B to base. We have a situation here, code siren. I repeat, code siren. Requesting immediate reinforcements, over. Base to checkpoint B, reinforcements are inbound. What is your status update, over? As the response came, the gunfire continued, followed by a scream, as if from a young woman in pain. Basil stood petrified, his hands trembling. I, I, I don't know. My comrade is currently engaging. I don't know what's going on. He shouted into the radio, desperately hoping for some help. A cracked response from the radio came. Basil struggled to make out the words as the gunfire continued on in the distance. Then, a man screamed, and the gunfire stopped. Total silence, as the broken message of the radio became nothing but static. Basil began to panic, wondering whether to help Ivan or to wait for reinforcements. He stood there and listened carefully, but nothing, only silence. Then suddenly, the singing, the most beautiful sound he's ever heard in his life. Basil jumped, shouldering his rifle and aiming into the darkness. Frantically, he aimed his rifle in different directions as the singing grew louder and louder. His breathing became faster and disjointed. His heart pounded like a drum. The singing came closer and closer, filling his eardrums until nothing. Silence again. He looked around and listened, trying to see or hear anything he could. Then he saw it. A woman with blonde hair that glistened under the moonlight, wearing a white dress, stood no less than 300 meters in front of him. She was unbelievably beautiful. Basil flinched, bending down in one knee and aiming his rifle. The woman remained still, 
evidently not phased by his threats. Hey, you! Stop there or I'll shoot! No response. He wondered, why would she be here? By herself? On the border? Was she a spy? Or a defector? Maybe I should go over there and talk to her. No! He re-aimed his rifle. Her eyes glowed in the shadows like a cat's in the night. The eerie yellow hue was both terrifying and alluring. Maybe she needs my help. No, he shouted at her. Last chance, you surrender or you die. Again, no response. He opened fire. A full magazine later and the woman was lying on the floor, dead. He went to examine the corpse just as reinforcements turned up. But when he got up close, there was no body. No blood trails, no drag marks, nothing. Where did she go? Neither Ivan's nor the dog's bodies were ever found either. What was found were bullet casings and Ivan's rifle left in the mud. The next morning, Fazl told his mother about what had happened. She gave him a tight hug. Do you realize how much danger you were in? You encountered a Samudiva. According to his mother, they are ancient Bulgarian nymphs that seduce men with their enticing singing voices. Once they lock them in a trance, they take them away as slaves and torture them to death. Had it not been for Ivan, you would not have lived to tell this tale. Oh, I'm so happy you're safe. Do you want more something scary? You can listen to the extended version of this episode over at Apple Podcasts. The link is in the description below. Like and share this video if it gave you the chills. And don't forget to subscribe to Snarled and turn on the bell for notifications. And if you dare, follow me on social media. 